So tell, talk about the five core uh, mindsets and innovations that you speak about in your, um, while, while you're on your tours. And uh, so explain a little bit about that to our viewers. Yeah, so as, as mentioned, I just completed a new book and I actually spent over a thousand hours in research. I, I dug through academic journals and, and I, you know, we look at neuroscience and fMRI machines, but, but also really understanding through interviews, how do the most innovative people in all walks of life think and act? And, and so what you're getting to is these, these core principles or beliefs that, that everyday innovators and, and, and also you know, celebrity innovators tend to embrace. And we talked about a couple of them already, but, but I'll just share a couple more. One of them is the notion of break it to fix it. So we've all been told that, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. To me, that is terrible advice. Like why wait till something has critically failed before you get after reinventing it? So it's this proactive notion to, to, to examine systems that might be working just fine deconstruct them and think about new ways to rebuild them, to upgrade them. It's funny, one thing I've noticed now in 30 years of business is that too often people overestimate the risk of trying something new, but they underestimate the risk of standing still. So this principle, break it to fix it, is, is a core one. Uh, one other one that I'll just share quickly uh, is, is the notion of uh, reach for weird. <laughs> reach for weird. The, the concept is that you know, when, when we approach something, we're trying to solve a problem or seize an opportunity, we very quickly gravitate to the tried and true. How, how have people normally done this? How, how has it always been done in the past? And my suggestion instead is to dig a little deeper and look for those oddball misfit ideas, the, the unorthodox, the, the surprising, the, the weird, because those are the ones actually that can make the biggest impact. And so these are, again, are just some of the, the habits and mindsets that people of all walks of life tend to embrace when they bring their creativity forward. Now, do you think that millennials are having a greater impact embracing this type of mindset because they have nothing to undo, they're just starting out and they're not so fearful of failing? Do you see that as more prevalent? Or is it kind of the, you know, up here versus here that, every, that there are risk takers no matter what level you're at? Yeah, I don't know that it's necessarily germane to the millennial generation, but, but yes, earlier people in their career, there's an there's a Eastern philosophy about having your glass empty. You know, like it, it, in other words, if your cup is full, you can't, it, you can't put anything new in it. And so if our minds are full, what we think this is the way you do things, it's not it's, you're unwilling to accept new approaches. People earlier in their career don't have that. They've, they, they don't have a you know, 40 years of thinking this is the way it's supposed to be done. So they do tend to be more open minded. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, the, the beauty of this to me is that and the research is so clear. As human beings, we're hardwired to be creative. That's our natural state. Now, many of us have sort of been socialized out of it. It's unfortunate because it's often been said that we, we enter kindergarten with a full set of colorful crayons and graduate high school with a single ballpoint blue pen. So whether you're a millennial or someone later in your career or anywhere in between, we really can reconnect to those creative roots with a little bit of practice and a little bit of a, a, a framework to get there.